morning, Michael. Uh, welcome to the first uh, Future Work speaker series. Um, just a quick intro. Uh, you you know me for the audience that's going to listen to this after the session is recorded. I'm Shravan Ankaraju. I'm the co-founder and president of uh, Divergence Academy Vocational Trade School. Uh, we are a vocational trade school at the intersection of cybersecurity and, and artificial intelligence. And uh, it's wonderful to have you, you know, as the head of military and veteran operation programs at Uber, it's great to have you on this uh, first of the speaker series. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. Uh, you know, kind of a quick intro, and I've been a big follower of Uber forever uh, as an engineer, as a technologist, and then a teacher. You know, I followed uh, a lot of um, Uber's contributions to open source called Michelangelo, Pyro program, you know, probabilistic programming languages, Plato, anything that's on engineering block side of Uber, I have followed it and I have passed that on to my students. And um, it's, it's wonderful to have somebody like you here on this call. The, the, the things that I get fascinated by is the folks that come to Divergence look at all the things I share about Uber. So what does it take for me to get into an organization like Uber? That's kind of a question that comes up. And I look at it and says, look, you gotta you gotta have a PhD degree, right? And 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 I and uh, but then the flip side of it is industry leaders say the STEM is important, but you also need to get your hands dirty and learn and contribute uh, towards uh, how many of the projects and portfolios. What I've learned, Michael, and maybe you can chime in here, uh, uh, is, is the idea of uh, apprenticeships. You know, various business leaders are creating uh, solutions for both uh, students as well as uh, uh, working adults. A pathway to get into large organizations like Uber. And what it, what role does apprenticeship play, in, in the in, in at Uber? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to answer that question. And once again, you know, I think we wouldn't have been able to solve the problem uh, of finding avenues or vehicles, right, for cyber, for AI, without connecting with programs like Divergence, right, that were really actually solving the problem for us, right? Um, so ultimately, Sorry, military and veteran. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Uh, my my Siri is going to go off. I'm sure about 19 times too. So, um, I I think that you know because the military veteran and partner community falls under underrepresented persons, um, they usually kind of get left behind when we speak to cybersecurity, when we speak to AI, when we speak to developers. Right. There's a lot of programs that are out there that are providing you know entry level skill sets. Right, but they're not necessarily walking them through the process of how to get into companies like Uber. So I'm very, very fortunate to, to kind of work alongside of you to kind of solve that problem. <clears throat> because there's apprenticeships and apprenticeship models, that gives us the avenue to grow our talent organically. Okay. So for folks that are exiting the service, looking to pivot, go to divergence learn cyber, learn AI, learn all those programs that I had mentioned, the apprenticeship model is the best model to really go. It provides the user that time to ramp up and really fine tune that skill set, learn the culture, learn the company value systems and get that hands on. Divergence is going to give them ultimately the, the paintbrush and the paints and the company is going to provide them with the canvas. So it's, it's interesting you say that because I mean, I'm on the other side uh, getting uh, people trained and uh, what I've learned is every organization has best in class, right? Everybody's building an apprenticeship model that is so unique to their company culture. But I'll, I'll love to understand uh, what are the components on your side. If it's early in the process, I'm OK with it. Mm -hmm. But if your thought process is about building a best in class apprenticeship model for Uber, what is it going to look like? Well, the, the one thing is, you know, I exercise humility, right? I know that as much as I want to say we're going to be best in class, um, I'm going to need other folks to kind of help guide me along that path. We are we are earlier, earlier on in the process. We are building it out. We will be leveraging 
Department of Den to Defense skill bridge programs, right? And we will have, you know, another version to where we'll be able to bring in folks 365, 24 um, seven. You know, unfortunately the alignment opportunities with those, you know, that are on active duty may not always align with headcount goals, right? And what the businesses want needs are. But what we hope to do is create opportunities that will accommodate both those that are still serving and those that are looking to, to make that transition, right? Because at the end of the day, you're not, you, you can only do so much reading and researching um, online, but you're really going to get to understand how that company operates by getting, to your point, your hands dirty. So yeah. as we look to build that best in class, you know, we're going to lean in on our partners and really find out what's working, go back and, and make those adjustments. Well, that's 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 good to hear. Yeah, the the flip side of that is, you know, uh, I think we uh, from where I sit, you know, every company I speak to, um, uh, Michael, uh, they're looking for a playbook, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 they're looking at is, is hey, is there is, is there a standard playbook? And I think there are initiatives out there from Business Roundtable and other initiatives around apprenticeships, uh, but it's the the bigger landing requires commitment, right? Is there's a commitment from all of us to share uh, and 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 share, like you just said, humility parts. Uh, hey, we're going to drive future work. We do not know exactly how the best in class going to get shaped. Mm -hmm. From where you are, again, I know you're going to be humble and, humo and hum you're going to bring humility in here. Uh, what does that look like in terms of future of work and Uber, mm -hmm. future work and apprenticeships. How do we bring them home? Yeah. So, you know, really obviously the business is going to dictate. I know that's kind of a, you know, I'm not punting that that question by any means down the road, but business ultimately controls, you know, how your your headcount, you know, is 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 really forecasted. With with the uh, you know you know unfortunately we're we're all in the middle of COVID right now and the right. pandemic has affected a lot of businesses. Um, Uber has done amazing things throughout the pandemic. It's really doubled down uh, on Uber Eats. So you know we hope to become the premier leader in in all things of movement of goods services. You know we're very much involved in the in the rollout of the um, the vaccinations. So with all of that said, there's going to be a lot of opportunities, a lot of opportunities to bring in new developers, to bring in new folks with with uh, with respect to cyber, et cetera. So we are going to continue to need to use our partners like Divergence to make sure we have a steady funnel of folks from this specific community to make sure that we continue to change the way the composition looks. OK, uh, and then I think that's super important, right? You know, Uber has really doubled down to make big, bold bets to change the internal composition of the company. We right. know that underrepresented persons, specifically within technology, are, are usually really, really low. And that's very similar with, with respect to the military as well, falls under that category. The only way to drive sustainable change is to have organic growth through programs like apprenticeships, that is where you can really put your foot on the gas and, and implement change. No, that's awesome, Michael. I know we know the sustained gainful employment, right? We talk about underserved and underrepresented um, individuals out there. And then I hear rider, rider and driver and marketplaces and evolution of technology to now roll out vaccinations. Where did that come from? You know, it never existed even what? But a year ago, of course, mm -hmm. unfortunate that COVID has to happen. And now we're thinking about utilizing technology to roll out vaccinations through Uber technologies, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and you, with uh, with respect to our, you know, our frontline workers, et cetera, you know, there's still folks out there, you know, that, that have to get to work every day. And we care about them. We care about everybody, obviously, that uses, you know, uh, that that's out there that's impacted by COVID, you know, and obviously, you know, there, there was a recent acquisition of, of you know, uh, you know that was in, in the press earlier. Once again, we're getting involved in pharmacy. We're getting involved in a movement of goods and, and, and obviously, um, you know, grocery. So once again, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. You know, Uber isn't this one trick pony that a lot of folks usually, uh, 
you know, think of us as, you know, you're either going to get food delivered to us or you're going to use us to, to get home, right? Or get from A to B. And there's so many moving pieces behind the scenes. It's so fascinating. Right. It's, it's, it's interesting you say that, you know, what's it called BOPES, right? Buy online, a pickup in store. And mm -hmm. there, there is that moment going on and a lot of retailers are doing it. And then you have Instacart-like uh, services that are coming in. And then you have Uber Eats and, and delivery services. All of them happened in the last uh, 12 months. In, yeah. in fact, they picked up pace. Uh, the, the, we are a technology school, um, mm -hmm. Michael, and a lot of talent that comes into divergence, whether through Career Skills Rich program or through our um, wet tech programs are, are all uh, related to cyber and AI. And uh, so I'm going to center this question around uh, IT, if you do not mind. Sure. Uh, and I'm thinking back to future work and apprenticeships. How how do you attract and retain IT talent, right? How do you see apprenticeships as a mode? I, I think there's a, a little bit of a, a stigma uh, attached to the word apprenticeship because we know we tend to think about trade, right? And most of the apprenticeship is around trade, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, we are talking about electric, plumbing, automotives, automotive technicians. And now we are shaping you and I together talking about apprenticeships as a way to bring IT talent in. So as as you're thinking through, you know, and again, I know you're uh, going to share, say it the way you see it. Uh, how do you see apprenticeship as a way to bring in and retain IT talent? Yeah, it, you know, and it, it's funny you bring that up, right? You know, here in the U.S., that was pretty common you know, identifier, you know, if someone who's an apprentice, they might be working in steel, right, or electrical, you know, but in, in tech, this not being the first company that, that I've been involved in this space in, you know, we've had, you know, different apprenticeship models. And, you know, it goes back to um, creating opportunities for pivot, right? We know that, you know, with specifically within the military veteran and partner community, we know that this is a great entry vehicle to them to, to, to gain access to corporations that have tech talent because they fall under, you know, uh, a certain classification, right? We, we know that this is the community that we want to go after, um, you know, so as it pertains to IT, we know that the numbers are extremely low with, with respect to URP. Um, right. You know, we, we are making strides to work with local, you know, uh, academic institutions where we're part of other, you know, external organizations to where we can focus in on URP talent. But at the end of the day, this is a great way to have homegrown talent, right? They've learned the skill sets and then we get to, you know, obviously introduce them into our culture and then have them grow internally. Um, and it's a great way to prevent talent tennis, which which exists in all or very, very much so in, in the marketplace, especially in Silicon Valley, where we're taking folks from you know competitors or they're leaving our shop to go to our competitors. This is a great way to, to show them that they're welcome, that we, yeah. we support them and that we care for them. It's a URP community. So we may we need to make sure that they're involved in a in a high touch process from start to finish. Mentoring, sponsorship, and, and also you know involvement, you know, into our employee resource groups, you know, so they can feel right at home. What I try to do with all of our folks that come on board is kind of walk them through the same process they felt when they got to their first active duty installation, right? They're taken to the barracks, they're shown where the chow hall is, they're given their, their SOP, right? Or I call it a Nuber guide, which is a hyperlink, you know, list of materials. Right. You know, and we, we introduce them to their leads. And once again, we, we have regular check-ins. And I think it's, once again, it's super important to show how much you not only support them and the, and the changes that they're they're making, but that you're there for them and support them even after they've started. That's, that's I mean, response, so I apologize, but uh, I think it's no, important. No, it's, 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 it, no it, it, it is it is important. You know, it's just kind of share, you're sharing the, the thought process behind the implementation of apprenticeship, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, hey, you are thinking about it in the same way that you would have, you would bring a soldier in into uh, and Absolutely. you are saying hey we have access to all the resources at uber and you're not limited to just those resources 
you know, you, you are part of the community, you're part of the group. We're going to grow with you. We are implementing and we're going to blossom and take it to the next level uh, after you join. And sure. when you're going to have continuous improvements. It's not like one, you know, you you come in and it's done, right? There's mm -hmm. more. Now, you, and it, it, it was a privilege to have you the other day at Lunch and Learn with our students. I thank you. Um, and I know you shared um, a, a, a day in a life. Um, but we would wonderful if you if you can capture that a day in a life of Uber employee as a as a who's a veteran. And again, I'm thinking more about IT, sure. predominantly IT, Absolutely. and um, the uh, and, and advice you have for those seeking uh, corporate success mm -hmm. uh, for for those veterans. Absolutely, you know, it, uh, as a veteran. You know, I, I think through that lens a lot, right? You know, it, it, I think it just, it's hard to erase 21 and a half years, you know, of, of Thank service. Thank you for serving. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. But as much as I try to, it's hard to, to remove myself from that thought process. But for somebody that is in IT, it's important to know that there is no such thing as normal, right? There's no such thing as a normal day. And, you know, that's not really generic. That's a really truthful response. This is a builder's environment. The folks that come to work here are, are passionate about change. They're passionate about technology. And they're constantly learning from each other. Um, we have amazing, amazing programs, whether you're a gamer, right? Or, you know, uh, you, you identify with, with other, you know, respective, you know, uh, affinity groups, right? You have places to go, but our teams work in a collaborative environment to where they're always sharing information. We're constantly adding, you know, tools to your skill set so you can so you can continue to learn and grow. This isn't one of those situations where, hey, you're you're going to be a, a back end developer and that is where you will permanently stay forever, you know, and you know, uh, just stay in your corner. We encourage folks to learn and grow, work collaboratively, and grow together. We just had our perf cycle um, a, a few weeks ago. Right, which was always an exciting moment. And a lot of folks had to roll up their sleeves this this past year with those changes, you know, from mobility to more, you know, assisting with our eats campaigns, right? And rolling out the, those programs. And like I said, through collaboration and working cross functionally, we got our our, our um, you know objectives and goals completed. And now we're ready for the next one. So it's a very hungry environment. Uh, Michael, you said something first happened, right? You, but recently uh, you had a new new program rolled out or was it a new cohort rolled out? Yeah, you had a first mobility team. Oh, yeah. Out. yeah. So so obviously, you know, folks weren't taking as many rides, right? You know, because of the pandemic, uh, people weren't traveling as much, you know, so folks that were assigned to our mobility platform also assisted with the ramp up efforts because eats grew because folks were working from home and and you know spending so much time at home so you know you're able to work cross functionally as i shared earlier collaborative environment okay. it's always encouraged so you're not going to ultimately be um uh, pardon me you know but you're not going to be pigeonholed right and only work so like i said we really really do value the the ability to be agile right which most veterans and partners are, especially that grew up in the military community, right. and we encourage cross-functional work. Yeah. The way I explain it, and then I could be completely wrong, the way I, I explain it is you got a rider, you got a driver, you got a marketplace, and, and that marketplace platform is and the success behind that, uh, the integration is what created multiple uh, areas for Uber in the industry, whether you call it eats or vaccinations or uh, ride travel, you know, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways that you can now uh, take the platform and make it even bigger and apply it across various segments in the industry. Um, I'm glad you have uh, shared. You are, if you're in EATS, does not mean you're going to be at EATS forever. It, and mm -hmm. if you're in uh, rollout of vaccinations, you're not going to be in rollout of vaccinations forever. You can move. And, oh, absolutely. And Absolutely. You know, and, and I'm just excited for what's to come. You know, I wish I could share some of that stuff, but I can't. Um, sure. But, you know, uh, it's it's just an exciting, uh, you know, each, each day, like I said, each day is super exciting. And, you know, I look forward to, you know, being able to bring folks that, that either I would served with or serving now down the road, you know, into a company like this, because I tell you what, it's it's wild. It, it really is. Yeah. Keeping me up. Let's put it that way.
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I get an opportunity to talk many companies and, and a, across the board, uh, Michael, and one thing is very clear. You know, we are all thinking about what is the workforce going to look like once we get out of the pandemic? You know, mm -hmm. what is the new normal going to look like uh, once we come out of it? I don't know if there is new normal or just a different, I don't know, no, whatever the word is of word of choice. I think everybody's looking at, hey, hey we want to help um, more people gain employment, um, more people get through these wonderful internships, externships, apprenticeships, way to bring up, build loyalty, long sustained employment, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as you are the person on the other end listening to this and you're building your apprenticeship program out, what do you want to tell other companies that are also trying to build uh, some of these programs out? What what kind of advice do you have for them? Yeah, so I, you know, I, b bottom line is, you know, if you've got something that's working, share it. Um, you know, I, I I believe in you know that the post 9/11 generation, those serving right now, or those that are making that pivot right out of the armed forces, it's the most educated generation in the history of the armed forces. Please don't look past this community as you help to grow out your apprenticeship model. I believe that the, the folks working here are really going to surprise you at their ability to learn, learn quickly, and apply those skill sets and make your company flourish. Um, for those that are um, toying with the notion to grow out a, an apprenticeship program, I highly encourage you to do so because, once again, you can change that internal composition. Um, we all know that diversity drives change. Diversity is welcome. And, and I, once again, if that's what side uh, you're on, I, 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 once again, I highly encourage you to actively participate in this program specifically. Uh, are, they, are you okay if, if any of these uh, organizations reached out to you and said a quick hello? Great, great question. Yes, I encourage them all. And that, that's, I, I, I encourage transparency. Uh, that's one of you know the biggest foundations that I stand behind. Um, we have to work together because we're not going to be able to solve this problem alone. Um, and at the end of the day, um, I, I think that the folks that I've worked with over the past several years, we, we've uh, clearly identified that that's the way I like to do business. So to any company looking to stand up, grow out any part of an apprenticeship program, please, I encourage you to, to reach out to me uh, for more information. I'm happy to work uh, with you to solve that problem. Michael, thank you, sir. This has been a, an awesome conversation. I'm learning from you, learning with you. There are um, my job as a person bringing, shining light on apprenticeship and internship, externship as a school and a vocational trade school. Um, you know, I have I have my work cut out, but I'm happy that uh, you both do. First one sharing this and uh, appreciate all the time. Appreciate your wisdom and uh, thank you thank you